Hello everyone and welcome to this third and final video on the IS75 architecture and components. I'm Paul Kotruba and I'm an escalation engineer with Microsoft on the ASP.NET team. If you haven't already done so, I would suggest you go ahead and watch the first and second video of this series to have a complete overview of the architecture of the IS web server and also of the W3WP exe worker process. The final video of this series is dedicated to overall request execution in IS 7.5 and ASP.NET. The objective of the video is to show you how IIS and ASP.NET interact to execute incoming requests to a web application and what the stages of HTTP response elaboration are. So without further ado, let's get started by looking at an overall architecture diagram of how requests flow inside IIS. Like all requests, HTTP requests start on the client computer um, when you fire up the web browser, be it Internet Explorer or any other web browser, and then are routed over the Internet to a web server, in this case a Microsoft IIS 7.5 web server. When the request reaches the IIS web server, the HTTP sys uh, kernel driver will parse the request and will actually route it to the uh, application pool which is responsible for executing that particular request. So in here we see that once IIS has decided what to do with the request, it will actually start up a new uh, instance of a W3WP process if one is not already existing. And then if the request is an ASP.NET request or it is for a managed uh, object, it will uh, load up the .NET runtime inside the application pool or inside W3WP worker process. Now, it is very important to understand that the loading of the W3WP process into memory and the loading of the .NET runtime are not instantaneous. So this will take up to maybe even a couple of seconds depending on machine performance um, and this will be a moment when the user will actually have the impression that the application is slow. So now let's see what, what actually happens inside the application pool. So we have a request that actually says we want a particular page of that, that application. So here's the page and the page is an ASPX file which is sitting on disk and um, if you've ever done ASP.NET development you probably know that uh, when you're building ASP.NET applications in Visual Studio and you're adding ASP.NET uh, pages into an application you get ASPX uh, .ASPX files that are generated by Visual Studio and let me just show you what I mean by that. So I have an, uh, a web application that's already running uh, in Visual Studio and I have uh, login.aspx which is my login form uh, which you can see here and this login form basically contains all the HTML markup that and the what are called the ASP.NET server controls that will get rendered but it also contains something called a code behind file. This code behind file actually is responsible for linking the page to the business logic of my application and uh, wiring up the events. This code behind file is actually now written in C sharp but I can also have code behind files that are written in uh, vb.net or any other .NET programming language. And the structure is the same for any uh, ASP.NET applica uh, ASP application page or user control, if you have a look at the picture upload control, which I'm showing now, it basically has the same structure. We have an ASCX file that actually contains the markup, and then we have an ASCX.CS for C sharp, a file which contains the code, which will actually link the control to my business logic. So when I deploy an application to uh, IIS, I can actually just drag and drop the whole code uh, into the root of my website on IIS and then it will magically be executed. But what goes on behind that magic is that since uh, the .NET runtime figures out that the page is actually not compiled, what it will do is it will actually go ahead and execute the .NET compiler um, and create a compiled copy of that a particular web page which will then be run to create an HTML response which will then be sent via the IS server back to the connecting client. So here we can see that uh, the page is now 
the compile page is now executed. The .NET runtime and the application pool hands that over back to the kernel driver of IS, which will handle the sending of the response all the way back to the client. Now, if we jump back into my Windows 2008 server, um, what I can do is I can actually take my, so I have a, an empty website uh, down here, which is the default website, which points to www root inside um, inetpub. So what I will do is I will uh, go ahead and take the code of my ASP.NET web, uh, website from here which is the code I had just showed you in Visual Studio. And you can actually see the login and the login.aspx.cx page that are there and copy them into, uh, into the www root folder. And now, as you can see, the application pool um, that is corresponding to the default website is shown as running. But if I look in the task manager, I will actually be able to see that there is no W3WP instance in there. So if I fire up a browser and I actually uh, create a request for localhost, which is the, the address of my website, you'll actually see that there's there will be a W3WP process coming up up here. Um, and you will actually, what I want to show you is that um, there will be a small fraction of time when a process called CSCXE will show up up here, which is the C Sharp compiler, which is needed to compile all the pages uh, of my application, or at least the page I am going to look at. So let's hit enter and you can see that it takes a little while and there's the C-sharp compiler and there it just disappeared for the, the W3WP instance, which is now down here, to load up for the uh, .NET runtime to load inside the process and then for the C-sharp compiler to compile my page. Now, once I log in, um, it's going to go ahead and actually redirect me into this folder called administration user, which contains a whole bunch of other code, which is the user interface for the authenticated user. So when I log in, you'll see the C Sharp compiler coming back and uh, executing once again, because I need to compile more pages as I request them. So let's go ahead and uh, fill in the username and the login and then when I click login there we go you can see the application is running slowly again and we had the CSTXE come up and then now it's gone so now I if if I go through the rest of, of the the user interface here you can actually see that there this is is going to run quite fast now and that there is no more uh, there are no more occurrences of CSTXE um, when CS, uh, when I log out and I just return back to, to localhost, and if I want to log in as the site administrator, then uh, what happens is that my application will take me into another folder, which is called administration, which actually has more code inside. So you'll see the CSCXE uh, process coming back up once more um, for, uh, for it to compile the rest of the code which is left. So let's go ahead and log in as an administrator on the site right now. And there we go. We see CSCXE once again. And once it's finished executing and compiling the code, we'll get the admin, the, the super user, super ad administrator interface available to us. Now, the other thing we can see is that if I go into other folders, such as uh, email templates, where I have actually more code, you will see that uh, actually uh, more, uh, more uh, code will get compiled and the CSCXE compiler will come back. Although it will be quite fast uh, to do. So the, uh, the thing to retain here is that the first time around a deployed web application is going to be slow because it will also need to compile if you just do drag and drop deployment. Now let's look at what happens when the second request for the application comes in and the application has already been compiled. So when the second application comes in and the second request comes in, what happens is that we get routed to the same instance of W3WP, and then since the page is already compiled, well then I don't have to compile it once more, I just have to execute the compiled copy of the page and send that back to the kernel driver, which will send it back to the end user. 
So let me just prove that to you. I'll just close my browser and I'll open another one and I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll issue another request for localhost and log in again. And you see now it's, it's virtually instantaneous. So if I go ahead and log in again, you see that there's th the application is now responding a lot, lot faster and uh, there is no more uh, CSE exe, uh, there are no more CSE exe processes that are coming up to actually compile more code. And I can keep navigating and it is not going to bring up any more CSE exe instances. Now, the other thing you need to know is that the application actually gets compiled um, in a uh, temporary storage folder, which is inside your Windows installation directory. For me, it's Windows. And then inside that, you have a folder called Microsoft.NET, which is the installation folder of the .NET framework. And then depending on the version of the .NET framework you use, so .NET 1.1, 2.0, or 4, you will have a temporary ASP.NET files and folders in there, which will actually contain the compiled code for my website. So if I look into assembly and I look into DLL uh, third party, I can actually find some of the DLLs in there. So what happens is that the IS server will go ahead and will read all of these DLLs directly from the temporary ASP.NET files and folders, files folder, instead of reading them uh, from the www root folder in INET pub. So now if I go back and I actually delete this folder and what I can do is I can show you uh, another way to deploy ASP.NET applications from Visual Studio and that, that is uh, by way of pre-compilation. So instead of allowing the user to compile pages as he navigates through the website, what I can do is I can just say publish and then Visual Studio will go ahead and will compile all the pages of my application beforehand so that the user doesn't have to wait anymore and will get a result which is much faster. So I'm just going to clear out everything I have in the temporary ASP.NET files and folders um, so that you will see it's empty and then I will actually go ahead and delete my application so that, uh, let me just stop the application pool here so that we don't have any more handles open to this content. There we go. And now I'm also going to go and I'm going to delete everything that's in the www root folder. Before actually uh, filming this video, I pre-compiled my application so that you wouldn't have to wait for it to pre-compile. So I just have it in here in this folder. And you can see here that instead of having a login.aspx and a login.aspx.cs, I just have a login.aspx file. And then I have a bin folder which contains all of the compiled DLLs already ready to go. So I can now just copy this content over to www root, paste it in here, start up the application pool, fire up a new web, uh, a new IE web browser, and now when I go to localhost, you'll see that the response is going to be much, much quicker, and there was no occurrence of csc.exe because I didn't need to compile anything because everything's pre-compiled. So let me just log in again and you'll see that this will be again much quicker. So there we go. Here we still have to jet some of the, uh, the files so you can have some occurrences of csc.exe but generally it's going to be much much faster than if you had just uh, deployed the site without any pre-compilation. And if I come back in here, you'll see that the root folder has actually been recreated and I actually have files that were uh, deposited in here, which are the files corresponding to my application. So these are the files that I will need to load from disk to actually execute my application and not the copy that is in the uh, www root folder, which is down here in the INET pub. Now there's one other thing that I'd like to show you, which is the fact that um, if I deploy the application 
uh, without pre-compilation, what I can do is I can just change the page directly on the server, either tweak a code bug or change some styles or do anything to it. And what that will do is it will invalidate the, val the, the compiled copy of the page and I will actually be forced to uh, go ahead and recompile the page. So go back through the CSC compiler and generate a new compiled page um, which will then be executed. All right, so this is uh, the uh, advantage of deploying an application with the code on the server. However, this advantage is that I might actually introduce bugs when I am actually live editing the application and it will actually be much slower the first time the application is executed. Now, the other thing I did want to show um, in this video was the fact that um, there are several compilation options which we need to be aware of uh, in the web.config and those are um, down here in the compilation section. So you, you can see that in every dot, uh, .NET ASP.NET web.config file, which is the global configuration file for the application, we have a section called compilation. And that compilation section usually just contains one uh, tag inside, which is the de debug equals to true when you first create applications in Visual Studio. And that means that the application will run in debug mode, which will mean that it will be slower to execute, consume much more memory, since we're also going to be executing instructions to allow the .NET framework to trace errors and give back much more precise error pages when an error occurs. What you want to do when you deploy an application uh, in production is you want to switch this to false, right? There is a second option which I'd like to uh, draw your attention to, which is batch equals true. Now this is not going to be uh, present in the web.config by default. It will actually, uh, it is actually a default setting and I've just put it in there so you could actually see its value. And batch is equal to true by default. And what batch means is that whenever I, lo I have a request for one of the pages which is in a folder, I'll go ahead and I will actually compile all of the pages that I have in that folder. So if I was to have a request for login.aspx, I'd also compile app error, email validate, lost password, main, new user, redirection, uh, alongside with login.aspx. The same goes for administration user. I'd go ahead and compile all of the pages that are in there and the same goes for administration and this is why you saw the CSCXE compiler uh, showing up when I hit the login page the first time uh, when I deployed my application and then you, sh you saw it coming up again when I logged in because I was actually redirected to this folder and I needed to, recompile, uh, to continue compiling my application. Now if you were to switch the batch uh, parameter to false, it would actually mean that it would compile the application as each page is requested. Now this might be very handy when you have large amounts of data in large, uh, large numbers of pages in one folder, but it is generally recommended that you keep it to true. So having that said, um, I think you now have a better idea of what the request flow inside a web application is in IIS. Um, and you also ha should have a better understanding of the IS overall components and how these components relate to one another. Please feel free to either uh, email me or come, out and come back to, to me via the team blog if you have any questions relating to, to IS further. And um, please feel free to share these videos with anybody who you think may be interested. Thank you for watching.